Good morning, fellas, and welcome back to Me Plays Games, where we play games. My name is Matt, and today, Elias and I are going to rate every minigame in Mario Party 6 on a scale from 1 to 5. We'll both be giving separate ratings for these minigames. Matt's ratings will be in blue, and mine will be in yellow. We won't be discussing Mike minigames in this video, so apologies to anybody who was hoping we would. Also, for the sake of transparency, we haven't played Mario Party nearly as much as a lot of other people, so our opinions will likely change over time as we play these minigames more and more and become familiar with them all. We'll be going over the minigames in alphabetical order order from A to W. I'd say Z, but the last minigame alphabetically is Rasslin' Rapids, which uh, does not start with Z. Zasslin' Zapids. Anyway, if you enjoy this video, subscribe to Me Plays Games for more content like this, and join our Discord server. You can find the link for that in the description. Alright, we've got a lot of minigames to go over, so let's get started. Aster Road Rage. Pretty easy minigame where you just avoid asteroids in dual format. Also, I find it kind of weird that you have to control your spaceship with L and R instead of the left stick, but it's not the worst thing in the universe. Not my favorite dual minigame, but a pretty good one. 3 out of 5. Aster Road Rage reminds me a lot of Subway Surfers. It's kind of boring, you just kind of press L and R. Not much going on here. 2 out of 5. Bulldozers. 1v3 minigame for the difference between the 1 and the 3 is something like the size of the stuff you're dealing with are pretty neat, and this is one of them. The 1 has to guide a small ball down to the end, while the 3 have to work together to guide a much bigger ball down. Pretty fun minigame, 3 out of 5. It's okay, it's very simple, and it's kind of unbalanced. I think the 1 is much easier than the 3, and it doesn't seem like communication would make it much better. I'm going to give it a solid 2.5 out of 5. Banana Shake. A DK minigame where you have to shake bananas out of a tree. Every once in a while, a hammer will drop, but it falls too fast to react, so you usually get hit by it. I'll take the free money though. DK minigames having a mildly annoying flaw isn't the worst thing in the universe because there aren't truly any winners or losers. It's just an opportunity to get a bunch of coins, but if this was a regular minigame, I'd probably give it a lower score. 3 out of 5. I'm pretty sure dodging those hammers is impossible. 2 out of 5. Black Hole Boogie. Mash A faster than your opponent. Usually just gonna boil down to who's the faster masher though. If you know how well your friends can mash, you'll probably already know who won the minigame before it even starts. Kind of a shame, but not really a deal breaker. I like mashing minigames. 3 out of 5. All you do is mash. Whenever Matt and I play it, I know he's going to win because he's better at mashing. 2 out of 5. Block Star. A fun single player puzzle game where you connect blocks of the same color to get rid of all the star blocks. For one reason or another, I wouldn't have expected puzzle games to be in Mario Party if you told me they were and I'd never played it before, but it's cool that they're here. This minigame is one of nine from this game featured in the 3DS title Mario Party The Top 100. The list of minigames they picked are questionable, but we'll get to the rest as they come up. As for Block Star, this was a great choice. 5 out of 5. Blooper Scooper. Eh. Why not? I don't really have any strong opinions on this one. Swimming away from a blooper while avoiding obstacles. Nothing wrong with that, but not one I'm particularly excited to play. 2 out of 5. I like the concept, and I think it could be pretty fun if executed properly. Main things I didn't like were that it was way too sensitive, like I barely tapped right and left to turn, and the controls were inverted for some reason. Maybe as sensitivity is because I'm on keyboard. 2 out of 5. Body Builder. One of the most boring minigames in Mario Party 6. Time your jumps to build a robot. Also not sure that this one needed to be a 2v2. 1 out of 5. Going down the alphabetical list, this one is my least favorite right now. The timing just feels so awful. 1 out of 5. Booed off the stage. A dual minigame where your goal is to dodge the boos for longer than your opponent. Pretty fun. 3 out of 5. I liked it. It's pretty fun, and it's uh, slightly skill-based, but kind of not really. The hitboxes are really jank. 4 out of 5. Boo Nanza, a dual minigame where you herd boos into the pen on your side of the screen. This is one of the better duels for sure. Good minigame, 4 out of 5. Not much going on here. It's very simple, and I honestly could probably do it pretty well with my eyes closed. So, 3 out of 5. Burn Style. Time your jumps on a platform to avoid getting knocked away into another dimension. Fun minigame, but I don't think this one needed to be a 2v2. Granted, most, if not all, of the 2v2s could theoretically be reworked into 1v1s, but I think it's pretty easy to imagine this minigame, but with all four players standing on different platforms in each corner of the screen. 4 out of 5. I really like it. I don't mind that it's 2v2. If the hitboxes weren't so stupid, I would give it a 5. But it's fun. It's a 4 out of 5. Cannonball Fun. If your definition of fun is being spawn camped by a Toad CPU, then yeah, this minigame's title is accurate. The fact that you have two cannons instead of one makes it a lot harder to aim, because a lot of the time I'm thinking of aiming my shots in relation to the center of my ship instead of the left and right. One out of five. As far as I can tell, the L and R buttons are completely useless, and so is the D-pad. You might as well just wait for somebody else to come towards you and spam cannons, and you'll probably win. One out of five. Cashapult. 2v2 minigame where you take turns catapulting each other into the sky to collect coins. Meh, 2 out of 5. I don't know why, but it kind of reminds me of that one jump event in the Pokathlon in Pokemon Soul Silver, which I have a lot of nostalgia for because it was like the first Pokemon game I played. Uh, I used a Dialga Staraptor and like a Zubat 
with five speed and jump and just destroyed everything. Four out of five. Cash flow. Pretty boring, but I won't pass up the opportunity for more coins. The fact that this is a 1v3 is kind of weird though. Whatever. Two out of five. Absolute trash heap of a minigame. The camera angles were terrible and the controls were unresponsive. One out of five. Catch you letter. I would have thought this minigame would have a button to pick up the letters, but nope, you just have to walk past them. Pretty good one. Three out of five, although I don't think I would have put this one in the top 100 if I were in charge. Three out of five. Circuit Maximus. It's surprisingly difficult to dodge all the amps, which makes it a pretty decent minigame. Not the most interesting one in the world, but it's alright. Three out of five. I really like this one, although you don't really have to dodge any of the amps to win. I just run straight through and use the invincibility frames to finish the segments. Four out of five. Cog Jog. A decent platforming duel minigame with a little bit too much going on if you ask me, but there's a pretty neat shortcut you can do. I can't do it, but that's besides the point. Three out of five. This is what happens when platforming goes wrong in a Mario game. 2 out of 5. Clean Team, a 2v2 minigame where you and your teammate work together to wash some windows. Pretty basic once you realize that there are pails you can't walk past, so you have to come back around on the other side, but that's a mistake you'll only make once. Or maybe I'm just bad and most people made it zero times. Elias made it zero times. I don't know, 2 out of 5. Really simple and easy, just go in a circle and whoever is fastest wins. 2 out of 5. Conveyor Bolt, this is a pretty interesting one. The rules of the 1 and the 3 swap depending on what time of day it is. During the day, the 1 is dropping lightning bolts on a conveyor belt to try and hit the 3, but at night, it's the other way around. The three are dropping lightning on the one. Three out of five. I don't know, four out of five because it's not bad. I kind of liked it, I guess. Control shtick. I love minigames like Book Squirm that basically boil down to doing a simple task but gets faster and more nerve wracking. Use your control sticks to match the directions of the arrows on screen and keep doing that until everyone else dies. Not many minigames use the C stick, but it works pretty well here. Five out of five. Definitely would be in my ideal top 100, although. Eh, it wouldn't really work on the 3DS. I guess you could use the face buttons instead of the C-Stick, but meh. Playing on keyboard made this not fun, because my C-Stick is on the left side and my left stick binds are on the right side, so it's reverse. Seems like it would be a lot more fun on a controller, which I didn't get to experience. It look basically it's just Simon Says, and you can't really mess that up, it looks pretty fun. I'd give it a 5 out of 5 if I could use a controller for it. Crate and Peril. Search and destroy, but impossible for the three. 1v3 minigames tend to be ones that could use a lot more testing and tweaking, and this is an example of that. Shorten the time limit, make the box bigger, make the spiny smaller. There are a lot of fairly easy things they could have done to make this game at least playable for the three. How did this one make it into the top 100? One out of five. <coughs> Whoa, this minigame is as unbalanced as the box in Mario's hands. One out of five. Daft Rafts. This is one of the more stressful platforming minigames. If you're not ready to jump immediately when the game starts, you just die. The perspective is kind of weird, but that's not a deal breaker by any means. Four out of five. I don't know why the first jump is an FU message if you aren't paying attention, but otherwise I guess it's okay. Three out of five. Dark and crispy. Bowser walks around in a dark room, occasionally stopping to breathe some fire, you know, as I think we all do on a daily basis, but the four players all have spotlights on them so they can see. It's not all that difficult to avoid getting hit as long as you make an effort to stay behind Bowser whenever you can. Two out of five. It's not good and it's not bad, just three out of five. Dizzy rotisserie. Raise your hand at being dizzy and making it to the end of the room with your controls rotated sounds fun to you. It's pretty much just a nuisance. This one was in the top 100 too. Excuse me? One out of five. Now this is bad. One out of five. Dunk Bros, it's basketball. Three out of five. Well, uh, three out of five, I guess. Dust Till Dawn. Fun minigame, but it could use a bit more balancing. The one has four things they have to dust in their room, and the three have twelve. Which is fine until you realize that the three are gonna trip over each other. I think it would have been better if the three had like nine or ten things to dust. Still a fun minigame where either team could come out on top. Four out of five. Two out of five, only because the CPUs are trash at this. No human would run across the stage every time to dust something. If you played with only humans, I'm pretty sure the three would win every time. It seems that unbalanced to me. Freeze frame. This one feels like a capture test where you have to click on all the squares with road signs on them. Mixed with a clickbait YouTube thumbnail. Not the worst thing in the universe, but not one I get excited to play by any means. Two out of five. This is a one out of five. It's not fun and it's really stupid. Full tilt. This is a pretty good platforming duel minigame. Weirdly enough, I either knock this minigame out in 25 seconds or two minutes and there's no in between. Three out of five. This was fun. Uh, I guess it's a four out of five. Garden grab. Mini games that boil down to mashing seem to be pretty polarizing, and you know what? That's fair. A lot of the time it comes down to who can mash faster, and there isn't a whole lot you can do within good sportsmanship to stop a fast masher from winning these sorts of minigames, but I don't know, I like them. Probably helps that I'm decent at mashing. The difference between this and other mashing minigames is that this one also adds a reaction aspect, which kind of makes it a Sunday Drivers Deluxe, if you will. We'll be talking about Sunday Drivers
hours in due time, of course. But as for garden grab, fun stuff. Five out of five. This is an intense 2v2 because I don't know what my key bindings are in my memory yet. Five out of five. You're bad at everything. Gondola Glide. Oh hey, what do you know? Two mashing minigames in a row. This one is surprisingly difficult to get down. It's really easy to miss time switching from pressing A to pressing B. Four out of five. I got confused the first time I played this because the indicator is only on one side of the screen, but actually it's really easy and I see why it would be fun. So, four out of five. You're bad at everything. Granite Getaway. If no one makes it to the end, the game ends in a draw instead of giving the win to whoever died last. A mediocre minigame otherwise, but it's got a pretty bad flaw in my eyes. Two out of five. I really like the gameplay here, and I do like it. I guess it kind of makes sense that if nobody makes it, it'll end in a draw because everybody does die. So, four out of five. Hyper Sniper. Shooting targets to try and get as many points as possible. Surprisingly, the Bowser spaces aren't that big an issue if you take it slow. I have a ton of fun with this one. The hundreds are pretty difficult to hit, but you pretty much have to go for them if you want to win. Five out of five. I really like this one. I don't have anything else to say about it. 5 out of 5. Insectoride. This is a pretty unbalanced minigame where each player takes turns choosing an insect to race to the finish with. The order is random though, and you better hope you get to pick your insect first because the grasshopper is just too darn good. 2 out of 5. The different rides definitely are not balanced. It's a cool concept though, so I'll give it an extra point for that. Put it out of 3 out of 5. Jump the gun. Cool 2v2 minigame where one player shoots bullets for the other player to land on to platform to the end. It's pretty difficult because you and your teammate have to find a balance between going fast and spacing out the platform so that they're easier to jump across and minimize the chance of dying. I think the fact that the targets are laid out in a zigzag pattern is a nice touch. 4 out of 5. I do like this game. It relies very heavily on teamwork, which is good in the 2v2 game. If you are even a little bit on the right side of the bullet, you will fall though, and that doesn't seem to be case on the left side of the bullets, but 4 out of 5. Lab Brats. Go through a bunch of mazes to find various characters. Pretty neat. 3 out of 5. Gave it a 3 out of 5 watching Pat play it. Lift Leapers. I'd like to think that I'm pretty decent at normal platforming games, but when it comes to the platforming minigames in Mario Party? You'd think I'd never held a video game controller in my life if you watched me play them. Maybe it's because I'm not so used to using the stick as opposed to the d-pad? I don't know. Fun minigame though, 4 out of 5. I really like this one because I'm good at it, so 5 out of 5. Light Breeze. Not sure that this one needed to be a 2v2, and also mashing L and R is the worst thing in the universe, even with digital buttons on a Switch Pro controller. 2 out of 5. As someone who is using the keyboard, 4 out of 5. Light up my night. Light a bunch of candles. whoop de flip and do 1 out of 5. It's a chill minigame game similar to Bonanza. I give it a 3 out of 5. Lunar Ticks. A really cool concept for a minigame where you have to land as close to 0 seconds as possible. CPUs are inexplicably god awful at this one. That doesn't affect my rating though. 4 out of 5. This is fun when playing against an actual human person. It comes down to the wire when me and Matt play it together. 4 out of 5. Mass Meteor. This is a super easy and slow minigame. It almost always ends in a draw and then the winner is decided by RNG. Not the worst minigame in Mario Party 6, but it's pretty far down there. 1 out of 5. It's not bad, but the controls are super slippery on keyboard. It's like 3 out of 5 in my book. Memory Lane. A shy guy walks along a path and you have to memorize it. Not the most difficult memory game in the world, but I don't know. I kind of like it. 3 out of 5. 2 out of 5. Enough said. Mullet. A fun little minigame where you hit Monty Moles while trying to avoid piranha plants. Also, for whatever reason, whenever I play it, my emulator softlocks at the end. I think I might need to find a new ROM. 3 out of 5. According to Matt, is softlocks. It's okay, I guess. 3 out of 5. Money Belt. This one is just way too easy to get the maximum number of coins on. You can get free coins from it, sure, but that doesn't make it a well-designed minigame. 1 out of 5. I didn't get the max. 1 out of 5. Motown. You know, this minigame makes me feel like the GameCube may have been a chore simulator disguised as a game console. In Super Mario Sunshine, you clean up a mess you didn't make, and in this minigame, you just mow the lawn. Whoopee! 1 out of 5. This is a solid 5 out of 5. It's one of my favorites in the game. Elias has been kicked off the channel. Note to sell. Fun, chaotic game. If you're able to get a ton of points by getting a note in between you and a nearby wall, you're in a pretty good position, but that's pretty difficult. 5 out of 5. This one's fun. I like stop mopping people into the ground to elevate myself, so 5 out of 5. Odd card out. Awful. This minigame is meant to be a spot the difference game, but it's executed almost impressively poorly. Only the first person to make a guess gets their input counted, which means that mashing one button is the optimal strategy, especially if all your opponents are doing it too. If you actually take the time to look at the pictures and find the odd one out, one of your opponents is probably already locked in their input, and because of the game's design, even if they get it wrong and you got it right, the game only looks at their guess and you don't get a point. Spot the difference is a neat concept, but they have 
absolutely butchered it here. Worst minigame in Mario Party 6, and it sucks because the fix is really easy. Just make it so that the round ends when somebody locks in the right answer. There's a lot of minigames in the series that would be 10 times better if they had just made one minor change, and this is a prime example of that. Zero out of five. Matt ruins it with his mashing strategy. It would be kind of fun otherwise, so one out of five. Oh, shut up. The game devs ruined it. Ozone. This is a memory minigame where there are five O's on the board, and you have to ground pound three of them after the board rotates. It's a neat little twist that sort of combines memory games with tracking games. Elias got this dual minigame the first time he played Mario Party with my friend Maxwell, aka Orange Juice, from another channel called The House Plays. We were playing with teams, so I memorized the board as well and helped Elias beat Maxwell. Is that cheating? I don't know. Who cares? Well, maybe Maxwell a little bit. Four out of five. I do like the spinning board, which makes it slightly more difficult, and it's not just a standard memory, like, raw, who has the better memory, who can run to the left side faster. So... Because of the spin, it's a 5 out of 5. Pitiful. This one is just pure RNG, but let me go a little bit more in depth about that. You pick a rope and pray that it's the one that'll carry you to safety, well, relatively speaking at least. I wouldn't call a one foot wide platform in an otherwise empty abyss that much safer than the abyss itself, but whatever. RNG minigames are part of what makes Mario Party the wacky fun experience it is, but the fact that this is a dual minigame where there are usually stars at stake is what I'm not crazy about. This probably would have been better off being reworked into some sort of four player minigame with five ropes instead of three. The concept for the minigame is fine, considering what game it's in, but I don't like that it's usually going to be played in a high-stakes scenario. Two out of five. This is a total zero out of five. It's totally RNG-based, and in the case when both players lose, the winner is picked from RNG as well. I don't understand. Pixel Perfect. This one's a pretty neat little 2v2. Surprisingly difficult to get on the same page as your teammate. When Elias and I play it, we're always saying, you get the last one, no, you get the last one, and we wind up losing. It's great. Four out of five. This one is fun. Four out of five. Pure Factor. Since you can bump other people with your barrel and head off in a different direction, this minigame is one or two steps away from RNG. I like the concept of DK minigames because I like money, and DK's sole purpose in this game is to give everybody money. Too bad the banana economy is completely out of whack. Oh, also, sometimes my emulator just doesn't show us the spider ladder. Three out of five. It's a two out out of five because it's funny. Hit boss. Avoid the spiked balls. Not too bad at first, but then by the end there are three massive balls in an arena that's just too small. Feels a little bit unfair, honestly. Two out of five. I think it's fun. The fact that the arena is smaller makes it more chaotic. Four out of five. Pokey punch out. I like this one a lot. A pretty chaotic minigame where you're trying to destroy as many pokies as possible. Love it. Five out of five. Five out of five because of the staircase strat where you can actually jump off the starry case and knock out a pokey completely. So that's pretty cool. Pop star. Weird concept for a minigame. The three fill up a balloon by ground pounding and the one fills up a balloon by mashing. Good luck to the one. This would have been a lot more balanced with a decent tweak to how much the one has to mash. One out of five. Ooh, I'm not good at mashing, so one out of five. Ray of Fright. Another one that's essentially impossible for the three, especially without a jump button. Also, for whatever reason, the first time I played this one, I thought the one was supposed to turn off the analog stick. Nope, it's the shoulder buttons. That one's on me. Still a one out of five. I won this game in less than two seconds because of my elite sniper abilities. One out of... Actually, I'll give it a 2 out of 5, because I won. Rocky Road. Team up with another player to smash rocks on the way to make it to the end of the road. Fun minigame, but good luck if you're playing this with CPUs. They don't seem to understand the concept of, if you punch me, I get hurt. Still fun to play with humans who know how to divide and conquer. This one is in the top 100 as well. Sure, why not? 4 out of 5. I guess that's pretty cool. 3 out of 5. Same as lame. I played this one with Elias and Maxwell as well, and in hindsight, I didn't play it properly. There's a lot of opportunities for mind games, especially since Elias and I were on the same team. We haven't had the opportunity to play Mario Party with four people yet, but that'll probably happen on the show in due time. Five out of five. No. One out of five. Seer Terror, a single-player RNG minigame where Bowser has bought a budget crystal ball and taken up a job as a psychic. This minigame is peak Mario Party, pure RNG in a game full of wacky nonsense. Three out of five. I didn't understand. So, I'm not going to give it a rating. Sink or Swim. When I first played this one against CPUs, I was the one and it felt like it was way in my favor. But that was mostly because they played it terribly. Everybody came up to breathe at the same time and really physically close to each other as well, which made it way too easy to knock them all out in a matter of seconds. With good teamwork, this is a pretty well-balanced 1v3, although maybe slightly in favor of the one. Four out of five. That's balanced enough. When you go up for air, you're very vulnerable and you can get domed pretty easily. If I'd have to give it a score, I'd say like three or four out of five. Uh, you know what? Just say four out of five. Slot Trot. This is a neat little 2v2 minigame where you and your teammates have to spin a wheel to match whatever pictures Lakitu is holding up. Not a bad minigame by any means, but not one I would have put in the top 100. Three out of five. Funi now. Four out of five. <laughs> Smash Dance. This is a pretty fun one where you ground pound glowing spots on the ground. If you're like me and you play with a 30 FPS cheat code, you're gonna have a bad time when you get ground pounded, because during invincibility frames you're completely invisible. Four out of five. 
I don't understand why the downtime after getting ground pounded is so brutal. Four out of five. Snow Brawl. The monkeys and shy guys make for surprisingly good meat shields for this one, but not to the point where it feels hopeless for the three. Decent minigame, but I'd probably either make the meat shields AI a little bit worse or remove one entirely. Five on three snowball fights don't seem very fair, but the balancing is surprisingly okay for this one. Three out of five. I like that two snowballs can destroy each other in the air, so just for that, four out of five. Snow World. Since I play this game on Dolphin, I'm able to use other controllers besides the GameCube one, and using a Switch Pro controller makes me wonder what it must have been like to have to deal with this monstrosity of a button layout. This is probably one of the few minigames that you'd be best off playing with a keyboard though. Elias can testify. Solid top 100 pick, although the fact that that game was on the 3DS would probably make it awkward to play. 4 out of 5. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you take a look at this footage? Alright, no, Elias is gonna fuck this up, dude. Dude, let's go! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Absolute legend! It's a it's a five out of five. Something's a mist. No. One out of five. Yes. Five out of five. Stage fright. The three boo the one off the stage and throw various colors of rotten tomatoes at them. Pretty easy for the three, but at least they can accidentally hit each other. That's gotta be a 10 second minigame for it to be balanced. Three out of five. Yeah, alright, okay, okay, I get it. Ha ha ha, but no. One out of five. Stamp by me. This minigame would have been so much better in my opinion if you used the stick to control instead of A and B. I always find myself forgetting which one stamps to the left and which one stamps to the right. Is it because I'm an idiot? I wouldn't rule it out. I play this one with my controller rotated with my left hand on the B button. Two out of five. I think I'm good at this one. Also, it's pretty cool. I like how you have to pay attention to both sides of the screen. So, five by five. Strawberry Short Fuse. Technically, this is a tracking minigame, but good luck trying to track the five monkeys that have cakes. There's too much going on on the screen for the tracking to be easy which I'm not sure is a good thing. My overall verdict on this one is a solid meh, and really, they picked this one for the top 100? 3 out of 5. I think Magnus Carlsen would be really good at this, but I'm not. 2 out of 5. Sumo of Dumo. I hate tank controls with every fiber of my existence, and the fact that I'm usually going to be going up against someone who doesn't hate tank controls with every fiber of their existence, well, I'm more or less a goner. 1 out of 5, but probably mostly because I suck at it. Tank controls are intuitive to me because I drive tanks. 4 out of 5. Sunday Drivers. A simple but fun reaction minigame. Shy Guy holds up a button and you have to press it as fast as possible to hit the golf balls. This is basically Garden Grab, but it's a 4-player minigame instead of a 2v2 and you don't have to mash at the end. 4 out of 5. I don't really like the reaction games very much because I don't know my buttons very well yet. 3 out of 5 for now, probably a 4 out of 5 if I knew what I was doing. Surge and Destroy. Pretty decently balanced 1v3. The fact that the controls are split between the two sticks for the one for no reason is ridiculous. 3 out of 5. Apparently this is my life calling. The controls are kind of weird at first, but intuitive after a while. It's probably easier for me since I'm using a keyboard, but I think I could probably do it on a controller as well. 5 out of 5. Tally me banana. Jump across barrels to get bananas. Neat minigame. Thanks for the money, donkey. 4 out of 5. Wow, I'm bad. 4 out of 5 because bam and am it. Throw me a bone. This is a pretty fun minigame where you gotta chain chomp to the goal by literally throwing a bone to send it in the direction you want it to go while avoiding obstacles. Sure. 3 out of 5. It's pretty nice. I wish you could also change the strength of the bone throw, but that's not too important. 4 out of 5. T minus 5. Simple concept, but really fun. Ground pound when the light below you is green. Great, now do that 5 times. It gets a lot more difficult towards the end, so anything can happen. This is what Mario Party is all about. 5 out of 5. I'm not sure that last one is possible to time correctly with any kind of consistency, but not I do like this one. 5 out of 5. Nah, you just suck. Get good. Trapeze Artist. Slam down a cage to catch as many Goombas as possible. Contrary to unpopular belief, this is in fact not Hungry Hungry Hippos. You'll have to go over to the house place for context for that one. That video will be going up on New Year's Day. Another minigame in the top 100, and a pretty good pick. 4 out of 5. This one is not good. That being said, this one is great. 4 out of 5. Treasure Trawlers. No. 1 out of 5. Instructions unclear. I clicked whenever there was an earthquake. It's normal. I have a duck trio living in my basement. 1 out of 5. I do not remember writing that, but okay. I bet you added that part about the Doug Tree on that. Trick or Tree. This is another RNG minigame that for whatever reason frames itself as if it's a tracking minigame. I mean, sure? This one has the same problem for me as Pitfall. The fact that a dual minigame is pure RNG is something I'm not crazy about. Making regular minigames random is cool and fun, but I think these two minigames are a little bit much. Fun fact though, the tallest player in real life gets home field advantage. Elias is a solid 8 inches taller than me, so 2 out of 5. This is not a tracking minigame, it's a 1 out of 5. Tricky Tires. Remember Sumo of Dumo? Yeah. Yeah, same controls, but this time it's a four-player race. Whoop-de-doo. One out of five. Oh, boy. 
I have be whomping every time I played this one because I drive tanks. Four out of five. What goes up? This is a pretty neat vertical platforming minigame where you try and get as high as you can by jumping on the backs of Koopa paratroopas. It's a little difficult to get the hang of, and is it just me or are these paratroopas hitboxes a little bit whack? Three out of five. This is doodle jump, but not really. It's really hard to do on keyboard. It's three out of five. Rasslin' Rapids and emulation strikes again. This minigame doesn't seem to work ever on my copy of Dolphin. Every time I play it, all the characters are invisible and the game ends as soon as it starts, and then the winner is picked at random. Pi out of five? I can't really rate it if I can't play it properly. Conceptually, this one seems fun. Unfortunately, we can't play it, so no rating. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. Those are our thoughts on every Mario Party 6 minigame. Just for fun, my average rating for these minigames was 2.99 out of five. And no, I will not round up to three. And mine was a 2.98. I'm rounding down. Leave a comment if you'd like to see us rank the minigames and other Mario Party titles. It's good for the YouTube algorithm.